Here are the top 20 fantasy football takeaways from week four. The first big one, Rashi Rice. His injury is looking like it's going to be season ending. ACL injury. Not what you want to see. You don't want to see his quarterback be the reason he tore his ACL. But it is what it is. Travis Kelsey showed signs of life with his seven catch 89 yard performance. And, and we should probably expect the Chiefs to try and make him the offensive focal point once again. Xavier Worthy ran the most routes among the wide receivers. He'll be the biggest beneficiary, I think. Juju Smith-Schuster is a speculative ad as well he did run most of his routes from the slot juju is not the guy i'm looking to replace rashi rice with there are a couple of other names that i will get to in a second that will help you at least get over this for the next few weeks but first sticking with the chiefs kareem hunt he takes over for carson Steele. it was a pretty short leash for Steele. his second fumble brought hunt into the game hunt then totaled 85 yards on 16 touches and he should be added on waivers samaj p ryan seems to have a hole in the passing down roll but the early down roll seems to be up for grabs at the moment and i think hunt has the upper hand right now. Two relatively quiet games for J.K. Dobbins, but he's moving into a larger role over these last two games. He only received 50% of the rushing attempts in the first two games, but he had 75% of the rushing attempts last week and then 70% this week. Gus Edwards isn't as involved anymore. And in better game scripts and in better matchups, Dobbins can have even more games with even better results than he's had over the last two weeks. Dobbins also owns the passing down role. He owns the goal line role as well. So there's a little bit more upside, similar to what we saw in weeks one and two, maybe even even more because of this bigger role that he now has. It's pretty clear that Lad McConkey is Justin Herbert's wide receiver one. Unfortunately, this is a run first offense, but McConkey came into the week with a 27% target share. He had 26% in this game, and that led to a five catch, 67 yard, one touchdown performance. A high target share on this offense might not result in huge production, but even bigger numbers will be expected for him, you know, maybe in negative game scripts and against faster teams. Jaden Daniels absolutely killing it, right? And along with that, Terry McLaurin is finding his stride with Jaden Daniels. By the way, Jaden Daniels is now the quarterback one in fantasy points over the first four weeks of the season. They had a bit of a slow start, the connection between him and Terry, you know, two finishes outside the top 36 for him. McLaurin now has two top 15 finishes over the last two weeks. He earned a 26% target share, 33% target share in weeks three and four, respectively. He also had a high target share in week two, but it didn't turn into production. But this is really good to see now, you know, McLaurin is in that wide receiver two conversation. Mark Andrews, the dude is just not startable right now. Okay, the Ravens are attacking teams with Derrick Henry and, and when it works they're sticking to it regardless though Andrews when they do pass the ball Andrews isn't even involved 46% route participation over the last two weeks which means even when they aren't passing the ball he's not running enough routes to make a fantasy impact so unfortunately I'm dropping him Bucky Irving looking like he might be usurping this role from Rashad White okay Bucky Irving didn't just stop at taking some carries away from Rashad White right that's what he was doing but he's moving in on the goal line role too right they both had 10 carries on Sunday but Irving had the goal line carries and he shared 50% on the goal line snaps with White. White previously had this role locked down, right? And also you're like, all right, well, White's going to be running more routes. He's going to get the goal line role. So he's the preferred option, right? Well, White only ran four more routes than Irving and his 58% snap share is down from 71% over the first three weeks of the season. If you ask me who I'm starting between these two guys in week five, it's Bucky Irving. Brees Hall, he's continuing to share work with Braylon Allen. Okay. He still maintained a 69% snap share for the Jets, but he was inefficient on his 10 carries this is not something to get used to okay Braylon Allen only had two less carries in this game early downs were relatively split but most of that split came in the second half okay now while you know Hall didn't come through for you right in those conditions at MetLife I wouldn't make too much of the split okay Hall is still getting almost all the receiving work and I think in most games he's going to be receiving 20 plus touches most weeks so this is an opportunity to buy for me I'm not panicking so much here a situation that I might be a little bit more worried about but not too worried is the Falcons backfield split Split, right? Bijan and Tyler Algier split early down work pretty much down the middle on Sunday. And Bijan had an 82% snap share while getting 66% of the rushing attempts coming into week four, but that moved to 64% of snaps and 47% of attempts. His 59% route participation from 70% coming into the week is also down, and that came at the expense of Algier running more routes. So this isn't a trend just yet, but something we have to monitor. Obviously, you're continuing to start Bijan as a high-end RB1. Hopefully, we won't have to move him too much down the rankings. I mentioned that, you know, Mark Andrews, you know, isn't getting the route participation. He looks good out there, but he's not getting the route participation. It's not the same for Kyle Pitts because Kyle Pitts is not separating. He's not earning targets. There's nothing designed for him. His route participation is going down every week as a result. Pitts has consistently been the fifth option behind Drake London, Ray Ray McLeod, Darnell Mooney, Bijan Robinson. Okay. I'm going to take the L on Pitts right now. Okay. I'm selling any dynasty shares that I have for pennies and a dollar. I don't care. I'm moving on and I'm okay dropping them right now. I know there's no tight ends to start, but I don't care.
care. I'm dropping him. Jonathan Taylor has a high ankle sprain. Apparently he has a mild case of a high ankle sprain, but usually this means missed time regardless. Uh, I would assume he misses a couple weeks. Trey Sermon would be the pickup on waivers. He can be started as a borderline RB2 over the next couple weeks. Seems like JT has a uh, has a knack for high ankle sprains. Not what you want to hear when it comes to JT. Josh Downs continues to have a big role in his first two weeks back. He, you know, he's been earning targets. 33%, 29% target shares these last two Sundays. The production was there with Flacco this week, right? He provided him with like 90% of his eight catch, 82 yard, one touchdown stat line. He's the one who threw him the touchdown. The word was that Downs had the best rapport with Anthony Richardson during camp. That includes Michael Pittman. So he should be picked up on waivers. It is looking like we're going to see Richardson at quarterback in week five. Travis Etienne has a shoulder injury. He got hurt early in the game. That's why we didn't see too much of him early, but he did come back. Tank Bigsby looked good though, right? Like he broke that big 58 yard run. So he's probably worth picking up just in case ATN's shoulder injury is a thing. Hopefully we get more details on that before waivers run, but just want to let you guys know that he is a little bit banged up right now. Jordan Addison reclaimed his spot as the wide receiver too, came back, you know, with a splash. Full-time role opposite Justin Jefferson in this game. Sam Darnold had no problems finding him for that long touchdown. Addison can be placed back in lineups as a high-end wide receiver three, maybe low-end wide receiver two, depending on his usage moving forward. But even against the Jets next week, I'm perfectly fine throwing him in my lineup. Christian Watson has a high ankle sprain, okay? And with him banged up he could go on IR there's no fracture there apparently but Dontavian Wicks he stepped into a near full-time role took advantage with a five catch 78 yard two touchdown performance 13 targets in this game they threw the ball a lot so that only amounted to 26 percent target share which is still a really good number but Wicks should be picked up right he can be started as like a borderline wide receiver too while Watson is out so if you lost Rashi Rice I think you know Dontavian Wicks is probably your number one option on waivers and continuing with the Packers this backfield is it turning into a split maybe it's possible that Matt LaFleur is working towards towards more of a split because that's what he's deployed in the past. But, you know, we need to see more, you know, to make that determination. But Josh Jacobs received only 53% of the running back carries on 61% of snaps on Sunday with Emmanuel Wilson playing quite a bit. Like we saw a similar split last week as well. For now, Jacobs should be treated as a high-end RB2 with Jordan Love back. We'll see what happens when Marshawn Lloyd gets back. But for now, I think we should assume that Wilson is going to be somewhat involved. Similar Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, you know, type of backfield dynamic. One of the tight ends that I might pick up if I'm dropping Mark Andrews or Cal Pitts is Tucker Craft. He's emerging as a startable tight end, right? The receiving production in Green Bay on Sunday was obviously inflated because they threw the ball 50, well, they had 56 pass plays in this game, but Kraft, he ran a route on 86% of those pass plays compared to 69% coming into the week. That is worth noting, right? And with Jordan Love back, Kraft could emerge. He was already, you know, running around on 69% of dropbacks coming into this game, which means he was already running ahead of Luke Musgrave, right? So this could be something that we see you know, improve. Remember, you know, coming in, I thought Tucker Craft was the better receiving option over Luke Musgrave when both these guys got drafted. So maybe they're seeing something similar here. Maybe Craft could emerge as the top 10 option. Who knows? DeAndre Swift rises from the dead. He heard the negative chatter and he shut everyone up. 23 touches, 165 yards. Roshan Johnson ended up with the goal line carry, but Swift's 67% of snaps was more consistent with what he had before that, you know, a lower week three. I would take this as an opportunity if you have Swift to move off of him and sell him. The Bears wide receivers only combined for 51 yards receiving, okay? Somebody in my league just now, 10 minutes ago, just sold DeAndre Swift plus Juwan Jennings for Brandon Ayuk. I mean, they were desperate for running backs, but still, I mean, come on, okay? So do what you can, move Swift, package him up, do what you can. The Bengals backfield, making changes, okay? Zach Moss had full control of the Bengals backfield coming into Sunday, but Chase Brown, he came into this game, took 50% of the backfield opportunities along with some goal line snaps. The overall snap split went from 76% in Moss's favor coming into this game to 60-40 on Sunday, okay? So, you know, with Chase Brown, look at, he's looking good with his opportunities. If I'm not mistaken, he's leading all running backs in yards per carry right now through four games. So this can become a trend. He's looking good with his touches. So I wouldn't expect this to kind of revert back to this being like a solely Zach Zach Moss backfield like it was coming into the week. With the Adam Thielen injury, Xavier Leggett coming through near full route participation and he made himself fantasy relevant. He was the number two target behind Deontay Johnson. He finished with six catches for 66 yards and a touchdown on 10 targets. So he's worth a waiver wire pickup as well. Um, I think you know if you can't end up getting Wicks, I think Leggett is probably your next best option. I think he can be started next week as maybe a wide receiver three. He received a 24% target share from Andy Dalton. So I think he's a solid option on waivers. And on tomorrow's show, we'll be going over all the waiver wire targets and ranking them and kind of you know putting that all together in a nice little package to put a little bow on it for you so stay tuned for the podcast tomorrow you can catch it on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever you catch them but i appreciate you guys thanks for watching talk to you soon see ya